Hi, welcome to another of our quick videos on Office 365. This time we'll be looking at how to create a quick booking form in SharePoint Online. We want to create a way for people to be able to request refreshments for their meetings. To do this, we're going to create a list and we're going to set alerts on it. So from our site, we can create a list in a couple of ways. We can go up to the settings and go into site contents and create a list. Or we can do it straight from the front page. Click new and then list here and give it a name. Let's call it booking form. And if you want to show it in the left nav, you can keep that ticked. Click create. And there we go. We've got a simple list just with title as a column. So I'm going to add some columns here. I'm going to add the organizer first of all. So that is going to be a person. There we go. Let's call it organizer. Uh, type is personal group, uh, but I'm not ticking allow selection of groups. So it's just going to be people. And you can set to allow multiple selections. I'm going to leave that as no. Uh, I want it to require that this contains information. I'm going to, probably going to do that for all my columns, so set that to yes. There's our organizer column. Now we want a venue. I can have a choice column for this one. Now these are our choices that will pop up and be available for people. So let's just say East Office, keep it real generic. I don't want people to be able to type anything in. I want these set choices and I don't want a default value. But I am going to enforce that this contains information. And we're also going to have room. So we'll have room as just a single line of text. Uh, no default value require it contains information and department single line of text again require it contains information and let's do a date from and a date to so we've got a date field here from it's a date and time and I want to include the time yes uh, default value let's do it today's date make it a bit easier and we do require this is filled in add column and we'll do a date to Date and time include the time, default values today, and make it required. And one more, we'll have a yes, no, or is food required? Yes or no, default value of yes, and require that it contains information. There we go, that's our basic list. Now you may have noticed the title column here. Now that's built in, you can't get rid of it. But there's two options. We can rename it and use it as something else. Or we could hide it. So in this case, we're probably going to rename it and use it as a different column. So let's go up to the settings and go into list settings. Scroll down and these are all our columns here and you can see titles required. These are guys are all required as well. If I click that, other columns I'd have an option for delete, but this one I can't delete it. I can rename it though. So if I want to I can come in here and call it name of course. Make it a bit more useful. 
save that. If I go back to booking form again, you can see it's changed up here. The second more advanced option is to hide it completely. So I'll show you how to do that now. We go into settings and list settings. We're going to have to turn on the ability to edit content types. So we're going to advanced settings. Tick this option here, allow management of content types and OK. And then if you scroll down, you see the content types area. You can click item and you will see the name, our new name, name of course. Click the actual name itself and then we've got some options here. This one is hidden. We will select hidden and OK. And that's going to save. We go back to settings. Go to advanced settings and turn off the content types again. And OK. And then go back to your booking form. And we've got, if we click new, we've got no option for name of course. Next, we'll have to change the view so we don't even see it in the actual list itself. So to get rid of the column itself, I'm just going to close this. We need to edit the view. So we can do this up here where it says all items. Click this drop down and choose edit current view. And in this section here, we can choose what, which columns are going to display in what order they're going to display in as well. So we will take off name of course completely and OK. And there we go. It's gone from the actual list itself. Now, something else we need to do, which is change permissions on this list, because as it stands, any visitors that come into this site won't be able to click new. There won't even be a new button to create a new item. So I want to change it so that visitors who are going to be the bulk of the people coming to my site can actually add an option here, add a record in here. So we're going to go to the cog again, list settings. And we're going to go into permissions for this list this time. And I'm going to don't want to ch change permissions on the actual site itself. I want to only change permissions on the list. So I'm going to stop inheriting permissions. Click OK to that. Now anything I do to this list permissions wise isn't going to mess up the whole site. So I'm literally just going to add in, just for ease, the everyone group. Depending on your permissions model, you may, may or may not want to do this. I don't want to email everybody and I want to make them a contributor. So that's not as powerful a user as an editor. An editor could actually delete the list even and things like that. A contributor can add new list items or delete list items. So share. So now visitors will be able to uh, add in a new record. One other thing we need to do if I go to browse back to settings. It's a very important setting in advanced here, which means that this one here, read all items. So users can read all items. You can change it so they can only read their own items. This is the important one. I want to change it so people can only create and edit their own items. So people can't come in and edit someone else's uh, record they've added or delete it even. So go down here and click OK. So finally, we want to set an alert on this list so that if uh, someone adds in a request, that will come to me and I'll see it and I'll be able to action it accordingly. So that's easy. We just set an alert. And we're going to click this ellipsis button up here and choose alert me. And it already is, it's already configured to send alerts to myself. I can add in other people. I'm just going to do it by email and I want to I want to know when new items are added and I want to send me a daily summary. Click OK. 
Now anything that's added in here is going to send me an email. So that's it. That is uh, how to do a very simple booking form. Now obviously when people click new and fill in the form, they get a fairly basic form to fill in there. You can get um, more clever and make it a bit better by using a power app. You can also use a flow here in automate to send yourself an alert and things like that. We'll look at those in other videos, but for now, this is a very basic but workable booking form. So I hope this has been useful and uh, if so, please check out my other videos. Thank you.